and welcome to this demonstration on creating a job template for submitting tasks via ANSYS EKM. Job templates can be created by any user, however, the administrator of the system is typically providing corresponding configurations. Today, we will use the root account to set up a job template for a Fluent Batch job. As a first step, let's log in into ANSYS EKM using the administrator account root. Once logged in, the administrator has access to the system's folder area. In this area, Different configuration options are available, such as extending the data model or defining remote file servers. Before defining the job template, let's quickly check configuration concerning the accessible hardware resources. The corresponding setting can be found in the server subfolder. In this folder, all available remote visualization and batch queues are displayed. Let's pick one and peek at some settings. Beside other options, observe that all eCAM users' accounts are mapped to corresponding operating system accounts. Now let's continue to define a so-called external application for the selected queue. These will be those applications which eCAM can call, of course, only for the corresponding queue. Each queue can have a set of own application if necessary. The definition of an external application contains in particular the execution path on the operating system level and a key which allows to refer to this application from within eCAM. In this case, we have instructed the system to make the application Fluent available. Now let's turn over to the creation of the job template. The corresponding functionality can be found in the application area of each user. Picking the Create Job Template icon will start the process. In the first dialog, we select to create a shared application and define a name. Of course, only the administrator can create shared application, while standard user will only be able to create personal applications. In the next dialog, I can define all the details of the template, starting with the application key and the queue. Let's set some values in these fields, remembering that we have just created this application key on the corresponding queue in the previous step. Now the application is most probably taking a couple of command line arguments. However, these values are not static but defined by the user when executing the job. Ecamm uses a so-called variable concept to create flexible command line arguments. Thus, before defining the command line options, let's switch to the variable tab. All variables which are defined here will be displayed to the user on template execution to collect the corresponding values. As you can see, I have prepared a couple of variables of different types. Observe that the last one is of type expression. In contrast to the others, this is not a user variable, but it is referring to a script. The script definition can be found on the script tab. Now let's check out why I'm using a script in this case by inspecting the macro definition. The script uses the built-in variable course. Only if the number of cores is defined by the user to be bigger than one, a command line option will be added, otherwise not. Obviously, expression variables along with a corresponding script extend the flexibility of the approach enormously. Anyway, observe that there is an additional script function validate. It prevents the job execution until the user has specified a value for the variable journal. Obviously, this option allows to configure the template such that the job is only executed if the user has provided reasonable input values. To hook in the validation macro, simply use the corresponding input field. Now, let's go back and check out how we use the variables in the command line arguments. As you can see, I'm referring to the variables by using a corresponding syntax. Variables can be mixed and matched to cover literally any use case. In this scenario, I have combined two variables in the first argument and used a static component in the second. Observe that the third option is referring to the expression variable, that means to the referenced macro. Of course, I could have also predefined some fully static arguments. A use case for such an approach would be, for example, to completely hide expert settings from the user. This is it. The template is created and can now be found in the application area of all users. Let's quickly check the result of our work and call the template as user root. First, we will select the input files, in this case from the repository of EKM. I'm lazy because it's just testing and select only a Fluent journal file. In the next dialog, I can define the job details. Observe how EKM uses the variable definitions from the template 
to automatically create the corresponding interface. For testing, let's stick with the number of cores set to 1. Remember that this will cause an empty expression variable because of the value of the cores. The result can be seen by taking a look on the resulting command line. As a cross-check, let's now define the number of cores to 2. Now, the command line contains the option minus "-t", 2, just as defined in the job template. That's it for today. Remember that this is only one aspect of the job submission functions in EKM. Keep an eye open for additional animation on how to use this exciting new capability.